Warning, this podcast contains... What's up, everyone, and welcome to the Ancina TV podcast for Once Upon a Time, the musical episode. Season 6, episode 20, A Song in Your Heart. I'm your host, Dom. With me, we have Jake and Rachel. Hello. So, unfortunately, guys, unfortunately, Nikki uh, is not able to join us tonight. Uh, she came down with the flu, so... It very, seems to be going around. Yeah, very, very <laughs> disappointing. She's not, I, I know, she tried everything she could to be here for you guys. Her stomach is just not up for it. So, so I will fill in, in for spirit. the MH. She's here in spirit. <laughs> so, the, uh, the, big, the big thing that we were talking about uh, last week was whether or not I was going to like this episode. Because I hate musical episodes and shows. The only one... Up to this point, the only one that I feel like that I I could say that I really enjoyed was was Psych, and then I said that I I would keep it under wraps. I wouldn't even tell my fellow co-hosts what I thought of this episode all the way through, and I have not I have not shared any any information at all. Um, so what I am gonna say is we'll get to it. So what did you guys think of it? <laughs> I like I this episode. It. The songs were okay. That's all, yeah. that's all I'm going to say. The songs were okay. I like the episode. They weren't actually, as bad actually, as I actually, thought. Really I, I, honestly, yeah. I thought they were going to be worse than they were. Oh, I thought they were going to be terrible. <laughs> I, heard one, I heard one and I didn't like it. And uh, it made me worried. But actually, the songs were actually okay. It reminded me a lot of Enchanted. And I love Enchanted. Mm -hmm. So I actually like this episode. Some of the songs reminded me of like different... Um, bands and stuff. Uh, yeah, it did. Well, you know, I think Regina's song was the most distinct oh. and also uh, Hook the most... Song. Hook song reminded me of a Queen song. It, it, it did. <laughs> now that I think about it. Okay, but we'll talk about the songs individually. Yes. Um, yes and we how we think about them. But overall, my overall thoughts that I will get into more depth later is I really like the episode uh, better than I thought it was going to be. Not my favorite musical episode. I will say that. I haven't okay. seen a lot of musical episodes in a lot of my sh the shows I've watched don't have a lot of musical episodes. There's three. Though. There's four musical episodes of a, of TV shows that you have to watch, Buffy. and that is Buffy the Vampire Slayer. That one's called um, Once More with Feeling. Power Rangers. That one's called Another Song and Dance. Bod's Burgers. It's called Wonder Wharf. And then I can't remember the name of this one, but it's a Scrubs musical episode. Mm. Okay, yeah, the uh, the Psych one uh, is uh, hundred percent recommended from me, and uh, um, I think the only other one that I know Rachel has seen is uh, the Supergirl. The uh, Supergirl one, one, yeah. And that wasn't that good. I liked it. Yeah, I don't know. I like the puns in the song. I think that's what was funny for me. So anyway. this episode starts off right. Right off the bat, with with Emma uh, preparing for a talent show back in 1991 in Minnesota when she's still in like a, a halfway house. A group home. Yeah. A group home. Yep. Yeah. And what I thought was interesting is she was humming the Once Upon a Time like theme song. I was like, hmm, this is that like little jingle that we constantly hear throughout the whole thing. And I was like, maybe this episode has potential. Maybe maybe this musical is is gonna be. Maybe it's gonna surprise me. Maybe it's going to surprise me. So, really, really excited for the, the intrigue of that. Uh, then we cut to, um, I mean, from there we cut right to the title screen, which I thought was really cool. It was like an orchestra uh, mm -hmm. that we get to see, because usually it's something it from, like, you know, some some kind of fairy tale canon. But this, they were just like, nope, it's an orchestra. Hmm. Yeah. Like a Fantasia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and then we, we cut back to, to present day and we see, you know, Snow and Emma getting ready for the wedding and she had all the dresses out. Emma's just all like, I don't two like, dresses. yeah, all two dresses. And I, I she's like, I, I don't like either of them. I don't know something's just not right. And that's when we find out 
that Snow had Belle look in Rumpel's shop for uh, her wedding dress to see if it came back with them. And it, in fact, did. Um, oh, God, I was so happy. I was like, oh. Yeah. I hate this dress. I... I'm not saying it's the most beautiful dress. I think anything, it's hideous. But it's like it's the, the, it's the sentiment. It's yeah. Somebody sentiment. killed the ugly duckling and just stuck it to a dress. That's what it looks like. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, no, like Rachel said, it's the sentiment of it. It's your mother's wedding dress. That means more than any wedding dress. I don't think you gotta wear it. Well, she wanted to. I mean, come on. She, has, she hasn't had her mom for very long. So it's just like kind of one of those things. It's like, yeah. yes, of course I want to wear this dress. Yeah. It's it's the sentiment of it, uh, and then, um, you know, she they they get it all ready. They bring it over, and uh, all of a sudden the dress turns black, uh, and, and made it cooler, and and becomes. I actually did like it black. I have to admit. I well, did it, like it, it, it became a little hairy too. It was like that that frilly kind of. Um, I don't know, like oh god, it just, oh god blacked out. Um, um, I'm going to out something. What the fuck's going on? Yeah, I don't know. But, um, and then, uh, like, it, it, what do you call that? The the hair, like, it's like costume, like, oh, almost like a boa kind of, like, hair, like, the whole dress was made out of. And that, that yeah, I agree. Boas Jake, are made out of fur. Out of yeah, but it's not, yeah. not all boas. Not all boas are made out of real fur. But, um, real fur. It was like a frilly kind of fur. It wasn't like actual, like a fur coat fur, you know? Yeah. Um, and it just looked really cool. So I agree. I agree with Jake that Black Fairy came and made the, the dress look better. But she reveals herself. And I'm like, what are you doing? Like, do it during the wedding. Ruin the wedding. That's that. That's what I'm thinking at the time. Like, that's what I wanted out of all this. Not that I don't want Emma and uh, Hook to have, like, a nice wedding or whatever. But I'm I'm like thinking of how it's got to go down like you you always interrupt the ceremony that's what the villain's supposed to do you know like she's not a very good villain okay okay she's maybe not. maybe she hasn't had interaction with a lot of people in a long time well, so actually she just, has just with children <laughs> yeah that's, children. that is that's, that's also true so she reveals that she she wants emma's heart now instead of fighting the final battle to just hand it over and, and save them all the trouble uh and she says since you don't know what you're in store for, head over to the clock tower. Because um, everything's got to happen at the clock tower. Everything happens at the clock tower because it's the center of the town. Yeah. No, it's not. Apparently, Granny is Granny's place. No, that's the heart. Oh yeah, the heart. Yeah. So they go to the clock tower. They find out there is enough black fairy dust to cover the whole town. In surprise, another dark curse. curse. Great. Well, uh, she's the one that made up the dark curse in the first place. So this is a new one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This one is set to go off when the clock strikes six. And yeah, this chose the wrong time. Yeah, right? It's supposed to be midnight. No. <laughs> no, that's Cinderella. The other, one. the other one. All of them are like strikes midnight and shit's gonna happen. Yeah. Um so I mean there's there's a lot of cutting back and forth and most of the songs were in the flashback. So I'm going to I'm going to go right now we're going to discuss straight up until the actual wedding, just before the wedding, and then we'll cut to the flashbacks and we'll come back to the wedding. Um so we see Hook um looking over a white tux with David, right? And, and that, 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 I think <laughs> that was hilarious. That was so funny. Was, Not and, enough leather so, for you? Yeah. Who chose the wedding clothes? I, for I don't the same know. thing. I don't know. That, Colonel Sanders, is that what we're doing? <laughs> that White Tox was not good. I'm sorry. No, not... I just love David's response. What, not enough leather, leather for you? Well, that would have been better. <laughs> that would have been better. Yeah, but Emma comes in, she's like, no, nah, it's fine. And I'm just like, no. No, that was not it. No, no, it's not. And then she she basically, she told Hook, you know, about the Black Fairy returning and that uh, she had to fight her alone and everything's going to be fine. And Hook's like, no, you just came to say goodbye didn't you and because they know each other yeah and well. she couldn't say no because she kind of was but you know at the same time um so hook takes it upon himself to now go and attack rumple in his shop uh shoot some of the dart of dream shade that he apparently brought back from neverland when did um, how, how long have you been keeping this like, yeah did you well he it? just was in neverland no that's true no i know but, I mean, this is something he may have had on the Jolly Roger for who knows how long. You know? Yeah, he may have. It could have been just in in his chest, because 
the whole Jolly Roger, all that, they were all in, in Neverland, you know, like, not even just recently, I'm talking about Hook was there long, long, long Last time, he could have stored a bunch of it, you know, on the, the ship. Okay. Um, so Rumple, uh, Rumple goes to sleep, and Hook's like, you know, we're doing this, so, uh, Emma could defeat your mother without your involvement, all that, and then the Black Fairy shows up, and I was like, no. I don't know. And then while this is going on, Emma is is uh, she's looking for a, a way to find everybody to bring everybody uh, memories along with her when they get separated. She was trying to find photos of everybody. She's going through all kinds of stuff. That's when Henry comes in and discovers the tape recording, which just happened to be set just before uh, the the song that Emma was humming from the talent show back in 1991. It's a, it's yeah, set well, you perfectly. kept you yeah. kept this tape recorder. You kept it. You kept. Yeah. The tape oh, in the yes. tape recorder, and you rewound it for us. Good job. Thank you. Well, I mean, this goes to show <clears throat> just how good the Black Fairy is at manipulating people. She doesn't even have to use her power. She manipulates the fuck out of people. Mm -hmm. She makes them feel things that they've never, they haven't felt in years, or makes them feel the feelings they that she wants them to feel, like she does with Rumpel. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, to make Emma feel as alone as she was in 1991 is quite a big feat, actually. Yeah. No, it, it's true. Um, Black Fairy was that bitchy orphan that way back in the day. Yeah. Uh, just uh, Lewis in chat says that uh, I think Hook could have rocked the white. Maybe. I mean, I would have had Maybe. to actually see him in it. To, to yeah, 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 yeah. But, yeah. Um... But yeah, no. I know. I, I just don't see Hook and White. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was just weird. Yeah. I would never have made my husband wear white. Um, Alex honest. asks uh, in chat, he goes, are there any lost references, Dom? I actually oh, great job. did great not. Job, Alex. I didn't nice. notice a single one. I didn't notice a single one. Uh, that's not saying there isn't one. I just didn't notice one if there was. There, well, you lost the opportunity for one. Black Fairy, choosing the wrong time. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, Lewis says, do you think the Black Fairy loves Rumple? I, I think so. I think she does. Well, of course, she does in her own twisted way. Mm. And I think her bringing all the kids there were pro was probably her way of trying to fill that void that was left behind when Rumple got taken from her. Yeah. And then she just got mean. <laughs> well, they wouldn't love her the way that they should love her. Yeah. Yep. So while all that, while all of this is going on, so Emma's looking for these pictures while Hook's in the shop, and then at the same time we have uh, Zelina and Regina looking for you know something to do to uh, stop the Black Fairy, if, you know, buy them some time, literally buy them some time. They find out uh, that they can maybe possibly isolate the time stop element of the original curse. So that's what they work on. They end up getting it right. Rumple steals it and freezes them all. Everybody but Emma and Henry. Yep. So, well, Henry wasn't there, so yeah. 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 Henry was still in the office after Emma left. He's sitting there he, looking at his book. Because it, it took him that long just to look through the pages. Yeah. And he starts flipping out. Right. And, and it's the first time we've seen him, like, totally, like, freak out. Yeah, yeah and Ever. this was terrible, and I mean acting-wise. <laughs> I am sorry. He says flipping out, he's throwing stuff everywhere, and a page falls out. Well, he threw the book, yeah. and I think he just did that accidentally. I don't think he mean, meant to do that. See, I, this is just weird seeing Henry this way. He doesn't get this way, and yeah, I don't well, know. I think I, just, I, think I, I just think need that's to get why used it's important. to it. Yeah, I think that's why it's important, because he doesn't get this way. He's so frustrated because normally he feels in control. As the author, he feels in control. Mm -hmm. This is completely out of his his control, um, and uh, he like all his hope, everything is just gone at this point. Like he's got nothing left. He's he's broken. He's shattered. Um, and this page gives him that. It gives him hope. Or the reason why they had this scene was to conveniently have the page fall out of the book, and they couldn't find another way to do it. Yeah. Right. Um. 
Alex is saying in chat, Dom, did you like the musical or not? We'll, we'll get to it. We're, we're getting, to we're it. getting to it. We're, we're getting, getting to it. it. We're gonna go song by song. That's that's how I'm gonna I'm gonna do, and then I'll tell you overall what I thought of it. Um, because because I know I know that's what you guys want to hear. I know you want to hear if I like it. So figure out. I'll, so I'll stretch he, it out. So he knows you want to hear it, so he's yeah. not gonna tell you right now. Yeah. So I'll that's stretch it out. A stretch it out. Um. So with this page, right? We we get uh the the whole flashback story like we've been getting the flashbacks throughout but now the characters kind of have the flashback story so with the flashbacks um it's revealed that snow makes a wish for emma right she wants uh to have her chance at a happy ending this is um, not the first time snow has made a wish no but uh, this, this this is the first time she wished on a this time it actually falling worked. star so there was actually a shooting star when when she made the wish um so and it wasn't a wish for her, so you know. Yeah, that no. kind of that pretty heavy too. Yep. Yeah, so it affects everybody. They wake up, or Snow wakes up, to a bird and the bird and everything, and she starts singing. It affects, it affects the bird too. It affects it affects this, everything. Right? First thing Not I everything. thought was Cinderella because Cinderella had a lot of bluebirds in it. <laughs> yeah, she had birds just perched up on her bedside, and she yeah. had vermin in her house. I just, I, I love the whole, when she starts singing, she's like, oh my god, like, what's, she's singing, what is going on? I the, like when musicals, why am I singing? I, I like in musicals <laughs> when they are aware that they're singing, and they're like, yeah, this is weird. This, yeah. This this is weird. And she's like, oh my god. Like, <laughs> yeah. stop it. Stop. So, stop. the first, the first song we get here is called Powerful Magic, um, and it, it, it starts off with snow, and in comes Charming, and they're all, like, confused, and then it's revealed, you know, that this is uh, Snow's wish, and that they, they, they're they thinking that they could use this song to defeat the Evil Queen. And here is my problem with the episode. While I did love this episode, here's my problem with it. This plan is fucking stupid, and it doesn't make sense. <laughs> it doesn't... That's how Disney shows... Yeah, that's just yeah but this is, this is... No, this is this goes beyond Disney. This is just stupid. <laughs> if this was a Dis no Disney movie doesn't Disney movies don't stoop this low. Well, this is okay? this In is cheesiness. The, this is the self aware musical. Like in yeah, Disney movies, they're musical. not aware they're singing like that. They're not no. aware that they're it's out of their control. Like that, yeah, that's I know. The point but of this. It's, it's almost well, like Disney movies have never outright said, "Oh, we're singing," and this singing is going to defe defeat a uh, person, evil person number you know number one. I don't. I don't understand. Well, that's because how that's because works. in a Disney movie, singing is just it's part of it, and it's like they're singing a song. Uh, yeah, this, this is does, doesn't make it doesn't make sense here either. Though. No, it does. It does because you are self. No, they're self aware that they're singing, but they're not self aware that they're in a musical. They are aware that they are singing. This they're aware spell. that they're singing, and that there's a spell going on. Yeah, like, there's a spell that gave them really good singing voices. How does this defeat <laughs> the Evil Queen? Because it's even magic. it. I know, I, know it's because, I know it's because it wasn't meant for them. It wasn't meant for them to use against the Evil Queen, but how would it defeat the Evil Queen anyway? What made you because come to the conclusion the whole lyrics that of the song explain their, that? Their loves, their loves together plus the singing of them together coming together kind of... The whole they... lyrics of the song explain that. <laughs> um, how the two hearts no, combine it doesn't. as one. Yes, they, yes, it does. Did, yes, yeah. I'm, I'm, do I have to pull up the lyrics? I you can, I and I will tell you what's wrong with every single one of them. I do like the fact that um, Charming was like, "Hey," and this is me singing. He's like, "I, I actually sing I sound, I sound good. good. <laughs> I sound good." So, then I think every the chorus of the song, part. there's there's powerful magic when two hearts are one. A powerful magic as bright as the sun. Mm -hmm. So they're saying that their their two hearts combined singing this song creates a powerful magic. No doubt. Right? It's yeah. Yeah. Where was the magic? That's what it is. It was Look, keeping they're, them they're safe and being two hearts. Changed. Yeah, this you could do this without singing. No, well, it says, we it's it says, a singing itself. It says, "Watch, hey, watch the wish you made come true." That is what love and its powerful magic can do. Feel the song inside our hearts. That is where the magic starts. It grows magic, with every note soaring sweetly from my throat. Every line ends in rhyme. Um, I don't know how, but it's sublime. With a melody so strong, how can we go wrong? The whole song is telling you that the song, the the love 
of the song, like the the love that it's creating, is in song form, and and that is more powerful than regular love. That that that's the point of the song. Uh, yeah, but uh, it don't make sense still. See, it it's not enchanted forest. That it makes plenty of sense to sense. me. Singing the singing just... itself does not affect anything. And well, well yes, and... It, it does. It does later in the episode, but the conclusion that they come to does not make sense about what it's supposed to do. Oh, well, to them, the magic and the singing and the, the power that they're probably feeling out of it, it does make sense because that's what they grew up with. They grew up with magic. Well, no, they didn't. But <laughs> Charming. They grew, up well, with, they grew up without magic, actually. Well, they grew up with, but they grew up in a land with magic, so they know what it can do. And they've done uh, spells. I mean, hello, we got Lewis says the singing was magic queen. because the blue fairy made it magic. Exactly. That too. So, um, and, I mean, and because the script said we so. had Snow White going, you know, to forget. So in, in, forget in terms of this song, what did you guys think of this actual song? I like this song. I did like it. I like this, I, yeah, I like the it was a good one to start out with. They were self-aware, but, but it was still in that um, Disney cheesiness that I yeah. like. <laughs> um, I mean, it was very cheesy. This whole episode was cheese, but I like cheese. Um, but I like it, yeah. Okay, so but, um, here's here's a problem I have, and this is going to come up with um, another um, two other musical numbers later. It's cool to hear them sing, and they have really nice singing voices. And this is, you know, it's it's really nice. I did enjoy the song. The thing I don't like is them dancing around the room and in there. Oh, this looks choreographed, but it's made to not look choreographed. No, it was made to look choreographed. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it was it was probably the less chore the most the 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 least choreographed musical that I've ever seen. Uh, but yeah, yeah, uh, okay. except for the next song that we'll get into. But so for me, I feel for like this song, they. Oh, go ahead. Uh, well, I just I was gonna say I feel like these two wouldn't be dancing around, jumping on furniture and whatever else if they weren't singing. Well, here's obviously. the thing about here's the thing about the songs. The guy, um, the guy singing in the rain wouldn't be swinging on a lamppost if he wasn't singing. Yeah, I know. But here's the thing. I feel like, and this goes for two other characters, that these characters wouldn't be doing the things that they're doing if they weren't singing. And I think the spell itself just affected, uh, didn't affect their personalities. It just affected their singing voices. So I think I would have liked it better if, they were singing, but they were still acting like themselves. And I don't think Charming and Snow would be doing a whole dance number, I even if they, they were would've. singing. I think they would have. I don't think because they they're different it. people then. They were different people back then. They weren't the same people that we know now. The people yeah, now they, they wouldn't be doing it. I mean, I know, say, I've never seen a musical that didn't involve dancing. So right. Hello, we have Gallivant, and that whole thing was dancing and singing. Yeah, every every musical, everything <laughs> that I've ever seen had had a choreographed number part of well, it. Well, this whole all the songs sounded very much like um like you're going to a show, like a Broadway show. Um I've been to a couple. Not a great one. But no, they all seem like that and they all dance. And that's how I think they portrayed it as you yeah. sing and you dance. That's just how it goes. Yep. All right, so for me, as far as this song goes. I actually love this song. Um, I think this was a fantastic song to uh, to start the episode off with. Um, I think it really it got rid of all the worries. Yeah, it 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 because I'm very guarded when it comes to musical. Like I said, I don't like them. So when when we start off with this and it, it's just like it was a really catchy song, right? They had great voices, and I think especially for this one, and uh, obviously Jake disagrees. But for this one, I feel like this was not super choreographed. Um, and I feel like it was the right amount and it wasn't over the top. Um, and it was just, you know, it was a little bit of like swinging around from lampposts on the bed. Like you even saw like the handmaidens and stuff come in and like... Oh, yeah, that was they're, convenient. They're cleaning up while they're doing it. They're, they're kind of dancing, but not really. You know, they're, 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 they're coming in and, and, and doing their thing, so... I thought this was a fantastic number. I thought it was a great way to start the episode off. Um, uh, and then we move from here to the Evil Queen, right? And we see the Evil Queen. And the so the song that we hear her start here 
the very, very first song. She did two songs immediately back to back that flew, that went into each other. The first one was called uh, The Queen Sings. This is the one where she's discussing with Sydney in the mirror um, how she's why stuck in song singing? and why is she singing and everything like that. <laughs> See, I like this. The mirror I like was this. singing. That's what cracks me up. Sydney's this. back, by the way. Hi. The mirror, the yeah, mirror singing. Yeah, welcome back, Sydney. Yeah. He was on and a you, show. And this is the only it. other scene that you were in. They didn't bring you back or anything. You were just you served your purpose. Goodbye. Um, and Regina broke your mirror again. Um, see, I like this part because Regina would be thinking this to herself. She's like, "Why the fuck am I singing? Can I stop, please?" She yeah, would right. be fucking annoyed. Um, and Alex, calm your tits, okay? I loved the episode. <laughs> <laughs> just the left one. The right one's a party tit. Yeah. <laughs> So, like, with this song, right, when it's not only, it's not just Regina, we have Sydney singing. Uh, we see the seven dwarves, or the six dwarves, uh, singing. Yeah, there was only six. Yeah. Um, which, which does, I'll, ex I'll explain, sing. I'll explain in a minute, I'll explain in a minute. There's only six dwarves, um, we see that, we see Marco and Pinocchio, right? Um, They're back. And, and, and Jiminy Cricket is chirping to the music. Pinocchio doesn't actually sing, Marco does. Marco actually had a fantastic voice. Um... Then, then we cut to Granny, right? And Granny's singing, and She's back. Granny has a fantastic voice. But this is she a similar does. problem that I had with um, the the Supergirl musical that we just dealt with, the Supergirl Flash crossover musical. Her voice is very good. It was it was like Stein for anybody that watches that. It was like Stein's voice, very good. But he had more of like an opera voice in that, and she has kind of like an opera voice ish. Mm -hmm. Um, and this, and it felt out of place in the song, uh, but that's not saying she has a bad voice. It just felt a little out of place to me. Uh, and then we come back know, to the end look, of Snow I and Charming. I didn't look up her background. Most of these people in the show have musical backgrounds. They've done yeah. musical theater. Um, I haven't looked. Didn't look at hers. So as far as this one goes, this is the first song that Regina sings before she gets into her her big <laughs> musical number. Yeah. Um, coming into this, and then like it's still doing the chorus of. Uh, the, the powerful magic song and everything, and it, it, it just kind of, like, it, it rung everything home, because it's just like, okay, now you're seeing, like, everybody's affected by this. It's not just Snow and Charming, like, this is everybody. Regina, the mirror, and everybody in between. Everybody's affected with it, and I was like, fantastic. I'm still loving this at this point. Still loving it. I think it's Okay, great. little thing, just a little side note, kind of. When, Gran when they showed Granny, and, you know, she was at her house... Did you notice what she was knitting? I didn't. She was knitting a white blanket. Oh, Emma's blanket, you think? Huh. Oh. Yeah, that's completely... Then Regina so, tore it up. Well, of course, yeah, she tore it up, but, you know, Granny probably she, she fixed, fixed that back up. But, yeah, so I'm thinking, wow, I didn't even think about that. Granny knitted Emma's blanket. Yeah. <laughs> It was just a little hit thing. I was like, oh. oh no, that's nice. I didn't notice that. That's actually really cool. Uh, Granny, you're awesome. Um, yeah. uh, Granny's like a, isn't Granny like a member of the council? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Uh, and then we move right into where that ends to the third musical number, uh, Love Doesn't Stand a Chance. Yeah. Um, this is Rock basically opera. our villain song. We got cussing. Yeah. Bitch. Which, bitch is bitch yeah, a cuss? We haven't um not really okay according, okay according to the network it it is but it isn't i don't know it, it works weird but um, i don't think anyone has have used that word before in this well they they no they've said this word before in this show but they, they use it very sparingly yeah like once every two seasons once every two seasons that was just like ooh, regina <laughs> yeah you need to put well, some money in that swear jar over well, there well yeah well um the evil queen would say these words. Um, yeah, she's she been wanting. She's been wanting to. She just hasn't been able to. But she can sing them. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And she um, can sing. And then what I loved about this was the like Regina basically using the song to to tell you know like love doesn't stand a chance like pff, your song doesn't mean doesn't do shit like I'm I'm gonna stop you anyway. Yeah. One of her one of the lyrics was um. I've been in love before or something like that. She re references back to her having love before. And that didn't work. And so. that didn't work. So this isn't going to work. Yeah. So 
and then like we were watching her through the whole thing and and she's going through and uh she goes and uh attacks the dwarves through song breaks but she doesn't kill anybody uh, pickaxe how did she break the pickaxe that's what i want to i thought that was like one of the most strong she's magical she just broke it over her knee though or, or she's just really pissed off and she can do that. Yeah. Well, she's and, singing, and so I, her I, magic is amplified. I'm aware that this was just, like, literally just before the curse, but I had to stop and check anyway, and it actually did say Grumpy on the handle of the mm. uh, the pickaxe, not Dreamy. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, we this, this is when I started, I paused the episode at this point. Because I'm like, there's only six dwarves in this scene. Yeah, and I'm like, what? What is going on here? Like, we're missing one of the dwarves, and I'm, I was trying to, I'm like counting, and I'm looking, and I'm, we're we're missing Dopey. Dopey wasn't here. Dopey wasn't even at the very end of the episode. Dopey was not in this Dope. episode at all. So I did some research, right? And the uh, the actor who plays Dopey, Jeffrey Kaiser, um, actually posted uh, on Twitter, and this was about a year ago. Uh, he posted. After season five, the tree is free. I've left the show. Love to all my fans. I wanted to let you guys know so it wasn't a surprise later on. I had no clue that the actor actually left the show. Because nobody follows him and it's sad. Um, well, then again, I mean, if you, the original Disney cartoon of, of Snow White, Dopey doesn't say anything, doesn't talk. No, yeah. he, and he didn't even talk. He never talked in the show. Not they really kept that. Not. And... I, like you scroll through the co- comments and uh, some some guy uh, Mike asks him, "Can I ask why? What happened?" And he said, "I didn't like the way I was being treated. I'm not going into details, but it's been a long time coming." So when it comes down to it, he just he wasn't happy. Uh, he wasn't happy because he played Dopey. Dopey wasn't. A... It, it's Dopey was we a... don't know what happened. Yeah, we don't know what happened. We don't. We don't know what happened. Um, but that kind of caught me by surprise because I. I didn't expect that. So, um, I figured maybe they would have tried to recast him. Uh, no. They didn't. They asked, Somebody else asked later on, further down, and they asked, uh, is there any chance that we'll ever see Dopey on the show again? And he said, only if they recast him. Like, he's completely under no circumstances coming back. So, I'm really kind of upset about that. Um, and I'm, I'm more upset that they, they actually told us that they freed Dopey from the tree. I would have rather have them, at this point, not told us this, yeah, uh, right. and and still had him as a tree this whole time, and then at least it explains why he's not around, because now we have absolutely no clue why he's not around. He went to go get his degree, and he's sure. now a professor. Yep. <laughs> I don't yeah. know what he's teaching. He can't talk, he but... <laughs> yeah, right. So, you know, Lewis says the Seven Nerves don't play a big role in the show. They don't, um, and I don't think that's what he not was anymore. not happy about. I think... I think there was some other stuff going around because Dopey in I particular mean, had, had less than most Robbie of the other does, dwarves. Probably does, but he just runs around. Well, the other dwarves, people. the other dwarves that nobody cares about, <laughs> yeah. they're still around. They don't have speaking roles. Uh-huh. Um, like we don't even know their counterparts' names. Yeah, but they stayed for whatever reason. So, you know, when you take that into consideration, it sounds like the actor. For whatever reasons, decided to leave the show either because he wasn't being treated well. It could have been over money. We don't know. Scheduling conflict. All we know is he wasn't happy with it. And and yeah, what and it comes it down takes... to is his personal, uh, yeah. is, uh, like he he himself. He doesn't say he was treated badly on the show. He said he didn't like the way his character. You know, so yeah, it seemed like and he wanted more be... for the character, and there wasn't enough. So he wanted to go pursue other acting career. That you know, that, okay. that that's just what that seems like to me. And it sucks to play Dopey. So. And I'm does. not gonna hold that against say, him. How, if, some, if someone says you're gonna play Dopey, all I mean, what are you gonna do? do? You have either you take it or not. But knowing when you take it, knowing that you're probably not gonna have a big role because, yeah, Dopey isn't that. Yeah. Dopey is Dopey. So I mean, this we I guess this is the first time I've really noticed him gone. Um, yeah. You know, because it, it was the most significant scene, I think, that we we should have noticed Dopey. Like, the other ones, it just, it's whatever. The dwarves are separated. They're not always on screen, all of them at the same time. But when um, you see all of them and one is missing, right. then you know something's wrong. Yeah. So, you know, wasn't a huge deal, but it's something no. that I noticed this episode, and I just wanted to point it out, because I'm sure most people didn't know. Um, 
And then, uh, you know, she goes in one by one, and she's taking uh, Marco and Pinocchio out. And Lewis does mention, I did notice this, um, he says, Regina did, like, a sexy little move when she went over to Geppetto's house and stabbed oh. the knife into the table. I did notice that, and I did feel a little uneasy because Pinocchio She was, was doing right all there. sorts of booby moves. She was, she was doing the boob twerk, you know that thing? Yeah. yeah oh, she's yeah, yeah. Like, oh, she, she, yeah, she was shaking it all. Yeah, she is. Yeah, you know, doing this. If she had a pole, she would have made some oh. money. I mean, even if she was doing that to Marco, <laughs> which I think she was, it's still a little uneasy, unsettling because Pinocchio was right there. But it's uh, minor. There's minor children. Thing. Yeah, minor children. thing. And then you know, and then Snow Charming, she doesn't go attack them personally, but which is why I don't know. Yeah. Um. Overall, you kill your guard. You kill your guards in one swoop, but you know you just go to the civilians' houses and you don't do anything. Yeah, you, you knock kill, over some IKEA furniture. Yeah, you kill your your expendable guards, but not the people that you actually want to kill. But I we don't necessarily know if she actually went and did that or if it's just like this glorified musical like dream scene. You know, I like yeah. to. Well, I think if it was a dream sequence, she would have done a lot more shit. <laughs> Maybe she might have. Um. And then, um, and then from there, we go to. Uh, I didn't like this song, by the way. No, I didn't like it. <laughs> the 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 love doesn't stand a chance. I yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> this is the this is the one you were talking about. This is the first one you heard. This is the first one I heard, and I don't like it. <laughs> I really it's don't like the, it. I don't know why. The, it felt it's like the a... mashing of the two. They're two different styles, and they mashed them, try to mash them together. I mean, yeah. I like the idea of this song, and I like the style that it, I usually like the style of song that it's in. I just don't like the song. It felt like a like a a rock power ballad. That's mm-hmm. that's what it felt like. Um, and I don't know. I think I think uh, Lana had a really good voice on this one. Um, she did. Uh, I liked There's her nothing... gritty. You know, like I she, don't know. She got gruff with her voice. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with it. I just I can't tell you what's wrong with it. I can't tell you why I don't like it. I just don't like it. Yeah. I don't know. And like so at this point, like I'm sitting here, I'm like, alright, so we got the uh the very first song, we got the powerful magic, we had the Queen Sings, we we came in, we got Love Doesn't Stand a Chance. Every one to me felt like it was progressively getting better. So I'm like We're good so far. We're about halfway through the episode right now, and we're good. We're good. I'm liking it. Um and then we get uh Charming and Snow go and see Hook. Right. This is where we get the musical number, Revenge is Gonna Be Mine. With all the pirates and the yo-hoing and... Um, it sounded very much like a queen. Like, it started off and I was just like, this sounds... Are they gonna do it to, like, a queen song? Well, no. Because no, these are but... songs, but... But yeah, no. But, but somebody no. do an edit where you put a Queen song over this video. <laughs> it does sound like one. It yeah. does, like... Don't stop me now. You can do that. Somebody yeah. do that, please. Yeah. Um, so, like, through the song, it's revealed the Charmings are looking for passage to the Queen's castle. Uh, they want, you know, Hook to do so. Um, Why? This is where Hook reveals. Can't they get there by. Do they need to get there by boat? Am I missing something? We don't know. Maybe. I don't know. It's probably faster than to take the Well, we kind of know that the Charming's the charming castle is kind of on a it's lake. On, it's on a lake, but I don't think... They weren't think in their castle. They were at they were at the beginning of the episode. Well, yeah, but not, yeah. not when they're asking for I passage think, on the boat. But I think in relation to... We've seen characters walk to Regina's castle... I think it's just From a far distance. It's Charming's probably a castle. shortcut. It's probably a shortcut. It's probably a shortcut and probably less chance of them getting spotted and well, and the stars. and the Jolly Roger is supposedly the fastest ship in all the realms. Yeah. So there you go. So this is where uh, Hook reveals uh, about how he wants the crocodile, and they're like, "You really want revenge over a crocodile?" And then <laughs> He's like, wait for the second verse. Yeah, <laughs> so that, that's when he goes. Literally, <laughs> just, wait. just wait for the second verse. And he reveals, you know, that the crocodile is the dark one. They tell Hook that uh, they have the crocodile in uh, their prison. That's why he can't find them. And uh, they'll give them to Hook as long as they get passage, and Hook agrees. Now, this whole song with the, the pirates and the tavern and the yo-hoing and the beer and the... I just want to... For those of you that didn't know, um, Colin broke his foot when filming this. 
and broke and it did. at the start of kept... the musical on the when chair. He doing that. When he on the on the chair, when he stepped his foot on the chair, when he stomped it, he broke his foot and he continued on. Yeah. He didn't know it was broken though at the yeah, time. Yeah, but that has to be painful as fuck. Mm-hmm. I, He's like, "Why is my foot hurting? I don't know." <laughs> yeah, so just imagine from that point on, this whole episode, everything this episode, Hook was doing it all with a broken foot. So, gotta commend him. Gotta commend him. Um, yeah, the, act, the actor is on the show. Oh right? God, yeah. he's so amazing. His voice was cool. I loved him. Yeah. Did anybody else think of Gaston's song? Almost. Yeah, yeah, kind of. it, it was the it was the atmosphere of it all. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so as far as as this song went, what did you guys think of this one? I love this one. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's really catchy. Um, I like it. I like it a lot. And I feel, and um, again, uh, something about what I said earlier about being out of character. I feel like Hook wouldn't be doing this sort of thing, even if he was under. Yeah, really I feel like I feel like I feel like he would be annoyed too that he was singing, but he <laughs> seemed really into it. But you know what? I don't care because it looked like at this one I really don't mind that much because it looked like he was having a good time and yeah. uh, and yeah. I really love the song and I love the performance and I love all the other And we know pirate, pirates, pirates sing just... anyway. That's just a thing pirates do. They have all their piratey songs and like yeah. this this just And felt... they conveniently rigged the table so that it spins without, you know, coming off. Yeah. Well, if it's if you noticed, season. if you noticed if you paid close attention, the pirate that was sitting on the right-hand side was the one spinning the table. Uh he was sitting down, you saw him turning it and stopping it. So um, but still, it is absolute. I love yeah. this. Lover. It was this whole. It was this whole thing. They planned it before. Yeah. They, they saw the charming. Yeah. They saw the charmings come in. They're like, quick, quick, get, get everything ready. Yeah. I do like the fact we saw Smeet again. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, are you? He wasn't you, a rat. They, who? Who? Who the fuck would think this guy is captain? I, he's like, oh, I love the flattery that you would think. Oh no, I'm the captain. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was like gonna go into this whole mama walk thing and cut, uh, just cut it right off. He was like, "No, we're not doing that." <laughs> yeah, uh, revenge, revenge is gonna be mine. Fantastic song. Like I said, just kept getting better as they went on. So still now moving right along. Like every song in order, I loved, and they just got better for me as they went on. Revenge is gonna be mine. Uh, I think is is the best song on through the whole musical. I think it's uh, absolutely fantastic. Um, that's not to say it was my favorite, but I think it's the best overall number. Um, I loved it. And then I would agree. I'd agree that I think it is the best song. Now, keep in mind now, all these songs were available ahead of time. Right? I Every, didn't listen to them. Right, neither did I. Every single song, though, was available ahead of time before the episode. They, I listened to them by accident. They wanted, they wanted... You can't listen to them all by accident. No, because I know someone else who watches the show, and then they were listening to it, but I didn't realize that they were listening to those songs. I'm like, oh, this song is good, but well, shit. Yeah. Um, the songs that I did, the songs that I heard were Regina's and Emma's, mm-hmm. and those were the only two I heard. So, the the whole concept that they were on iTunes, they were on Spotify, they still are. Um, there, you know, you can get these songs wherever. Um, and the whole pur- purpose of releasing them early was. So you could sing along while you were watching them. That was that was kind of their theory on it. I stayed away from it. I didn't even look at the track listing. I didn't want to know how many uh, musical numbers, anything there were. I wanted to be pleasantly surprised. Um, now, in the next scene we get with with uh, the evil queen going to see Rumple, um, and she's like, "I need these songs to stop this whole thing," right? And she's like, "You know, all right, dark one, sing." And I'm like, "All right, here we coming? go." Here we go, because I know he can sing. Yes. Um, uh, I forget what movie it was now that he, he sang. He sang with, a, he could play guitar, and he could sing, and he did both in a, a, a movie, and I cannot remember for the life of me what, what movie that was. He now. can just, he can strip too, because he's been a full Monty. But no, he has a very big, he has a big uh, theater, musical theater background too. Right. So. so I'm like, all right, here we go. This is, this is going to be. Either really no, as good soon or as really he turned bad. around, as soon as he turned around, did his little thing. I'm like, he's not gonna sing. Well, no, you had the whole, it. you had the whole music build up, like the crescendo was kicking like, in, nope, and then nope, nope. he just laughs and he goes, uh, "Sorry, dearie, do you think the dark one sings? I'd rather gouge my eyes out with a rusty fork." And I absolutely just burst out laughing. I applauded them so much. Like this made me so happy. Like the. 
this was ha this to me was better than the the dark one better than rumble actually having a song was him not having a song like and and throwing that out there like i uh so i i could say that this was my favorite song but it's not really a song so that wouldn't be accurate but. i wish he was a song but it's, the way they did it was was really good and it was hilarious and it was i think totally it would have been right creepy Mm -hmm. It would have been. I was waiting for him to be like singing it in Rumpel's voice and be doing no. this thing. And but yeah, and just the way they set it up and just the fact that he's in a cage. I'm like, he's not singing. He's not gonna sing. He's not gonna sing. He's not gonna sing. Yup, he's not singing. Yeah. Um, so I was like, so like, um, I was kind of like predicting it, but I was kind of hoping that I was wrong. But no. But see, like, if I had listened to all the musical numbers or I had seen the track listing ahead of time. I would have known he didn't have a mus uh, musical yeah. number. So by keeping all that information in the dark for me, when we got to this, that's what was that was pleasantly surprising for me. It was. It was. I was waiting for him. I was like, oh god, what's he gonna sing? How it's gonna? And then he does it. I'm like, ah. <laughs> and then Regina's face was hilarious. But if yeah. he were to sing, I feel like it would have been like a song that Plankton would sing on SpongeBob. Rachel, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Yeah. F is for fire. <laughs> that burns down the whole town. Yeah. Uh, and then we go from there to um, Zelina. Right? Now, showing Zelina my, is Zelina watching. Fine. What? I'm showing my Zelina. Oh. Uh, right. Yes. And Zelina's watching through her, her crystal ball. Um, and this is where we get the musical the number. The spell affected Oz, too. Wicked always wins. Yeah, this is kind of where my... I was like, how far did this musical spell reach? Like, how it far reached all the It Magic reached go? all the significant characters. There you go. It reached... But for all we know, it could have hit the land without color. Right? Yeah, you it could have yeah, hit you had, everything. Yeah, you had the fucking mutated Frankenstein monster dude singing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. You know, yeah. popping and locking and that shit. Yeah. No, for all we know, it hit every realm that is, like, everywhere. Mm -hmm. it, it and then you had Jafar everything. singing his reprise of Prince Ali. Yeah. And this would explain how every Disney song has a musical number in it now. See? Great. See? See? Hmm? Um, you know, but then, then uh, as Nikki pointed out in chat, you know, it was, like, a little worried, like, how is this going to play out? Where, You know, and then we, we find out in the end that the um, none of them remember uh, having this song. And I think that, that was great i think that worked out great but for zelina everyone's forgetting everyone's forgetting everything nobody's gonna remember the season at the end of yeah no but for Z zelina song uh you know she's she's kind of happy that uh regina's about to fail um and then that's when she sends this green box to uh to regina um but i don't know what do you guys think of zelina's uh musical number this it one's is... my favorite song oh my god it was very much straight out of like a broadway it hurt and the way she projected herself, and I wasn't expecting anything less from her. You could tell that she was having a blast, and Zelina herself was having a blast. I feel like Zelina would do this. I feel like she yeah. would just get on her broomstick and start singing. But you know what? The only thing that would have made it better had she just gone down into Munchkin Land, just started whacking the Munchkins on <laughs> the <laughs> Started hitting them on the head with her broom. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't. I love this song, uh, but this is where, for me, uh, it started petering off a little bit because I, I loved, uh, I loved the hook song, and then coming off the hook song to the Zelina song, uh, I didn't like it as much. So, me personally, if I was somehow involved in the editing of the show, I would have made it so Zelina song came before uh, the the Evil Queen. I mean the uh, the pirate song, the Revenge is gonna be mine. Um, because I think the, the, the pirate number was a lot more catchy than the, the Zelina song. And I think at that point, that's, that's kind of what we needed here, but I'm not saying the, the Zelina song was bad. It was really, really good. She has a great voice. Um, I know that Lana was on, uh, an interview. I don't remember. It was good morning America or something like that. I don't know. She was on, she was on something. She was discussing the musical episode and she said that, um, herself and, um, uh, Jennifer uh, Snow were the ones that were the most scared. Uh, Regina herself, uh, um, Lana had a incident when she was younger um, where she locked up on stage during a school play and had stage fright and 
didn't actually perform her number and like she felt all the parents and everything standing there watching her and she never thought she'd be able to sing in public again uh so she was really worried about that and well, she um, wasn't technically singing in public well the way that they did um every single musical number here is they were all pre-recorded but they were actually singing them while they were filmed they were not lip syncing well, that just helps, you know, to actually sync it up when, yeah. you know, when you go back into editing to actually, yeah. they'll play the song for you on set and you try to sing along with it. Yeah. Um, and uh, interview with Josh Dallas, Josh actually said that, um, or Charming, uh, Josh sa said that it helps uh, also get like the veins and everything going in the neck. You really see the emotion and everything if you're actually singing as opposed to lip syncing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but for Lana had mentioned for this, uh, the two people on set that were the most excited to sing were, was Josh Dallas, um, and Rebecca Mater. So she, Zelina was really, really excited to get this song out. So when Zelina asks you to give her a song, you give her a fucking song. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I think it was a good song, uh, Definitely not my favorite, but it's Again, but we not my least more, favorite. We need more mindless munchkin abuse. That's just what we needed. <laughs> sure. sure. She would do that. She would do that. She after she got off the broomstick, you know, just just once, just once, just just casually. There's a munchkin walking up behind you, and then she is all up into it, and she just like spreads her arms out while she's singing, and then she just casually just whacks the munchkin. <laughs> whacks on her in the head. Mm-hmm. No, I was a little confused here. Why did she send the boxes to Regina? Okay, so this part didn't make sense to me, but I, I think it makes sense in Zelina's fucked up head. So she said, I am going to help Regina with this plan to steal the Charming's voice. And therefore, by doing this, it's actually me who's stopping them. So I'm going to tell Rumple that, oh yeah, that box that they it used. It was, was mine, actually and box. then he'd be like, Oh, I regret using, you know, teaching Regina over you. Yeah, because Rumple did mention to Zelina that uh, I wanted to I want you to prove that I, I um, picked the right witch, and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Regina's obviously not thinking that he's talking about her sister or anything. She doesn't even know she has no. one at this point. She don't. She don't know yet. So, no. yeah. But um, I like the little nod to continuity that, you know, she doesn't know, but Zelina has always known. Zelina has been watching Regina all this time. Yeah. Uh, and that she's still in Oz and that, you know, the other witches are gone and Dorothy's gone. So, so good job, writers, on remembering, you know, what you're writ what you're written. Um, and also, I, I want to say, again, we... we I love Oz, and I loved. I would love to see it explored more in this show. Maybe next season, but um, Oz has not been utilized to its fullest potential because we keep saying, oh, we keep no, seeing not at the all. same. We keep seeing the same goddamn two locations. Yeah. Is it? Is this all that Oz consists of? No, but you see that a lot on on, on shows that have sets like that. Um, so from from there, we move to the Charmings going to. Uh, Regina directly, and this is where we get the song Charmings versus the Evil Queen, which is basically just a hybrid version of Love Doesn't Stand a Chance and uh, Powerful Magic. It's a hybrid. Um, yeah. I actually really like this, this hybrid version. Um, I dare to say it may have actually been my favorite song uh, that, that they did. Uh, I just love the blend of it. I think it worked really well. Uh, the back and forth um, at this point, it was nothing new because it, it was literally two parts of the yeah. songs that we've already heard. But the mashup of it, and at this point, it's kind of almost, it, it's ridiculous to say it's nostalgia at this point because it's literally from 20 minutes earlier. But it gives kind of a nostalgia feel at this point, you know? It's, it, yeah. Um, but I, I honestly, I think this was my favorite uh, number of the entire episode. Um, and I just loved it. And then. How uh, Regina stole the uh, the song from them, and you see them like try to sing and they can't sing anymore. That was hilarious, actually. That was pretty funny for me. Oh, uh, it was so good. Uh, and then but she the mentioned first thing how that popped in my head was uh, Little Mermaid. Mm, yeah, and she mentioned how uh, this green box just showed up, but green isn't really my color. Um, 
But Don't it seems to have done the where trick. This came from? What? Wasn't she, didn't she wonder where this thing came from? Yeah, she did. She said, I just found <laughs> it in my vault. I just found it, it in my have, vault, but whatever. It, it seems to have done the trick, so face. who cares? So, um, but yeah. It was like a music box, because when they, after it was done, it looked like it had the music had to box. Put, to put literal music in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But um, we did see the power of the song was working. It was suppressing Regina's magic. It was keeping, she couldn't use her powers, the fire, anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, so it was working up to that point. If it wasn't for Zelina, they may have actually defeated her with the song. But um, then we and then, the yeah, the only one that had to save her, as she is now. Yep. So, uh, but this is when, you know, Blue shows up and, and after Regina you got sends her back home. Change. Yeah. Your stripper jellyfish costume is gone, thank God. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, she revealed that no one could actually take the song, uh, that it's inside all of them, but it was not meant for defeating the Evil Queen. It was meant for Emma. Um, and you guys it, never sing again. Basically. Um, so she won't be alone in the final battle, um, and in the morning, no one will remember any of this. So I think this was a really good way to put the musical out there, uh, get the musical going, like, the, the explanation for why they were singing were fantastic. The songs were fantastic. They were really catchy. Uh, enjoyed every single song so far. Um, and then, uh, the, the explanation of why they went away and why they're not remembering their songs and why they're not singing anymore completely makes sense. So, as far yeah, as this goes... Yeah, it's just to keep in, them safe. Yeah, as far as this goes in terms of a story... Fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, loved it, absolutely loved it. Yeah, I was it. I was hope I was hoping that they wouldn't retcon everything, like oh it's not canon, so like it doesn't matter what happens in this episode. No, yeah, nope, no. it was one hundred percent true to the the whole thing. But now we go back to present day, right? And we have Emma. Uh, she goes to the Black Fairy to give her her heart. She wants to save all you know her family from from the 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 spell that's frozen. That's when the Black Fairy grabs her heart. She can't crush it. And we get the song known as Emma's Theme. And it falls out of her hand. And she leaves her heart on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> I had to pick so, up your heart. Dust it up. Come on. Emma but someone singing, steps on. Emma's singing the song. It's definitely not my favorite song at all. Like, this is probably my second to last favorite song. Um, this is actually my second favorite song. So... Yeah, I don't know. I was very, it was very. The, um, okay, I was surprised by his her voice, but it wasn't the same time because um, the actress, her sister is an actual. Her sister is a singer. Yeah. So it obviously it runs in the family. So, mm -hmm. like I said before, though, it it was really cool that they used the the tune of the the show incorporated that into the song. I thought that was really great. Um, now the Once Upon a Time theme song has words. Yeah. Uh, I think Jennifer Morrison does have a good voice, um, and I felt the scene was really powerful. Um, uh, like, the whole it breaking the, um, the magic aspect of the, the kind of curse, you know, the, it's, it's the, an the, element the from frozen? the curse, but the, yeah. the, the, the frozen. The frozen The curse. frozen magic. I, all I know is that when she's doing that, the black fairy looked like she was scared shitless. Yeah, uh, she, she she's was. like, well, what, is, what, is, what is this thing? What is this thing that you're doing? What's, What's going you on? doing with your voice? Why are you singing? If she doesn't know what, no, I just like to think that she doesn't know what singing is. Maybe. Maybe. Like, she's never heard singing before, so she's, like, freaking out because she doesn't know what Emma's doing. Yeah. I'm sure those children did sing when they were, so. I love the they, scene. Those, those children did not sing. I love the scene. I just didn't care for the song, and... Um, I'm not saying the song was bad in context of the show, but I'm also looking at it as something that I would listen to maybe outside of the show, and I could guarantee you that this is not a song I would ever listen to outside of the show, uh, where almost every single one of the other numbers I would. I mean, I think it's because it's the show's theme, mm -hmm. so like we've heard it so many times, it's, but now it has words. But because like we've never heard this song, like nobody listens to the One Splash Time theme song other than when they're watching the show. So I think because it's a song we've heard over and over again and you just put words to it, it's really only significant because it's tied to the show. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, that being that. said, I don't think there's any any. I don't think there's any of the songs I actually hated in this episode. Oh, there was definitely one for me, and uh, that was after Emma broke the spell and realized that her family's been with her the whole time and her whole life. And we cut to but the. They don't know what the, they don't know what the fuck she's talking about. Yeah, and we cut to the wedding on top of Granny's diner. It's on the roof. I think it's a. I think it's across the street. Is it? I think that's their apartments. Yeah, because it was it was it was on the kitty corner from the uh, from the clock tower, and Granny's is on the same side as the clock tower. I don't think Gra- oh, I don't okay. think Granny's rooftop is big enough. Yeah, I was gonna say that was a little weird to me, especially but after after uh, Charming made such a big deal out of you know not wanting it at Granny's on top of Granny's would be better. Okay, so it's across the street. That makes more sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. It reminded um, me very much of like a Wonderland with the checkered board floor and everything. Everything looked very green screen. Don't, Wonderland. Don't, do this, don't do this to me. <laughs> it did though. I'm sorry. And and as I've seen, I saw because I'm stupid and went on Facebook and saw an actual picture of her wedding dress and I knew exactly where they got the inspiration from. This yeah. wedding dress was so much better. Alex, Alex is saying in chat. He goes, I have to disagree with you, Dom. Emma did a great job, and I love how it was extremely powerful, in my opinion. Way better than the hook song. I didn't say she did a bad job. Um, I think she did a great job with the song. I think it was a very powerful song. Um, And, uh, yeah, she did better than Hook, but that doesn't mean I like the song better than Hook. Just just because it was a good job doesn't mean that that, that it's better. I don't know. I just I didn't like it. But the inspiration for her dress, even her head, if you go look up um, Grace Kelly, mm-hmm. that was an inspiration for this dress because it's almost identical, even that, yeah. even down to the headpiece. Yeah. And I've always loved that dress, so I was like, to me, it was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> yep. my little, my little princess inside me. Because um, she did, she married the King, Prince of Monaco, Mon- Monaco. So, yep. And then we she have was a princess too. We have Doctor Hopper. Um, as the minister oh, of the yeah, peace. Oh, yeah, great. You're, you're back. Hey. He, he's been here this whole season. He hasn't gone anywhere. He's been here the entire season. Hook, you're a captain. You can marry people. He's only not going to marry ship. himself. Only, that only applies on his ship. Then, exactly. My point, exactly. Well, they already went through get that they weren't getting all the guests on board get on. to get seasick. This was already the, established a few episodes ago. Who the ago. fuck cares? Get on the fucking ship. <laughs> give, him some, give him some, like, and Jeremy. I'm pretty sure Feed you can't some marry ginger, yourself. That'd be good. Pretty yeah. sure you can't marry yourself. Y'all can be, no, this is, this is fine, you know? There's magic in this world. Your, your rules don't apply. Hmm. Yeah, uh, even even Nikki in chat is saying Emma's song definitely had more meaning than Hook's song. I'm not disagreeing that. I'm disagreeing whether I liked it or not, and I didn't like it as much as Hook's song. I totally get it. I respect it for being what it was. I'm not saying and it's bad is in saying any that, way, shape, or form. <laughs> yeah, if Nikki's saying it has to be true. Yeah, but no, I'm not. I'm not bashing the song in any way, shape, or form at all. I think she had a fantastic voice. The song that I will bash is the song "A Happy Beginning." Um, I yeah. absolutely hated this song. Yeah. More than I didn't any, hate it. Any, I didn't song. hate it. Only, only for the sole reason that this is the only song that felt out of place in the entire musical, right? Yeah. Okay, because so. you have all these other ones in the past, right? And I think I made this pretty clear that um, if all of the songs happened in the flashbacks and it was contained to that, I'd be completely fine with it. The majority of them were. Uh, this song... The wedding song and Emma song were not, and I will even even take Emma song because of for what it was and what it represented and how it tied to the musical. Um, I I think it was still perfect, the way it was in the episode. This song just felt very very out of place to me. Um, it's because this because this song happened after the flashbacks and it happened after Emma's song. Emma's song was significant to the story because like, you know, that's the only thing that could stop, you know, the Black Fairy. This song had no place. Yeah. There was no there was no reason for Emma or Hook or any of the other characters in this town to sing. Henry. So they're singing for no reason. Henry. There's there's no curse that's making them sing. I love that uh, if if you look on the the Spotify or the iTunes credit that they actually credit 
Henry with like as much credit as they credit everybody. And Henry said two words. He didn't. He didn't sing he those said words. He, didn't he, sing. he said. He said those words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's, he's he said those with a with a little with a little you know inclination. He said them so like that was barely singing, yeah. um, but again this song I'm not too crazy about, and be, because the my main issue is the reason why the song exists and just the song itself I don't really like because this song reminds me of that wrap up that wrap up song at the end of a show that you see at Disneyland, mm-hmm. which I'm not altogether crazy about. I mean, the shows at Disneyland are amazing, but there's always that one song at the end that's an original song that I don't like. I never really like them, and that's yeah. what this felt like to me. So it just brought back bad memories for me. So I'm like, yeah. can we we can skip this part? I mean, everybody's listed on there, um, and Jared is literally the one at the end. He's like the last one credited, but he didn't really sing, so I don't. <laughs> I don't know. Because he can't. Yeah, but I mean, I guess, I guess technically, since he's featured as an audio uh, cue in any way, shape, or form on the track, that his uh, actor, that his actor said, his, his actor said, it's good that they didn't give me a song because I can't sing. Yeah. So I mean, overall, I actually really like this musical episode. I, yes. This, this is this mm-hmm. is gonna go up there with me for one of the best musical episodes any show has ever had i'm not saying it is the best it is one of the best no my it's gonna it's in my top five now because i didn't i didn't have a fifth one to put in the slot but this one goes above power rangers but right under bob's burgers Mm. for me (laughs) i I dare even say this was better than the psych uh one for me and i loved the psych uh episode and you uh, still need to watch the other musicals that I just mentioned. So, but I don't know necessarily if I like this better than Gallivant. No, Gallivant is better. I will say that, in my opinion, Gallivant is better. Yeah. Gallivant was amazing. They should never canceled it. Fuck yeah. you guys who want to watch. But the LDG we got, TV. but we got Princess <laughs> Jazz out of it, so you yes, know what? I'm not complaining. That's true. Yep. Um. So I guess you know now that it's uh, we we discuss everything that there was about the musical itself. Uh, going back now, which one was your guys' favorite song for for the whole musical? Zelina's. Oh, mine was a toss up between Hooks and Zelina's. Mm. It really was. Yeah, uh, like I said, uh, I think Hook is probably the most fun and catchy one, and I think I really really enjoyed that one, uh, and it will probably be the one that I listen to the most outside of the show. Um, but as terms of the show and how it all went down, the, uh, the mashup song, uh, the Charmings versus the Evil Queen, I think ends up being my favorite, uh, in contained to the episode. So, uh, but Hooks was just absolutely fantastic. Um, and then for, uh, another little bit of news that I'm sure everybody's heard at this point, but I feel like we have to address it anyway, is Jennifer Morrison has officially posted on her Instagram uh, as I reached the end of my six-year contract on Once Upon a Time, I was faced with a significant decision. ABC, Eddie Kitsis, and Adam Horowitz very generously invited me to continue as a series regular. After very careful consideration, I've decided that creatively and personally, it is time for me to move on. Emma Swan is one of my favorite characters that I've ever played. My six years on Once Upon a Time has changed my life in the most beautiful ways. I am absolutely blown away by the passion and commitment of the Oncer fans. I am so honored to have been a central part of such a special show. I will be forever grateful to Adam, Eddie, and ABC for giving me the gift of playing Emma Swan. Uh, as I move on to other creative endeavors, I will continue to attend the fan conventions whenever my professional schedule allows. I will look forward to meeting the fans. If ABC Network does in fact order a season 7, I have agreed to appear in one episode. And will make most certain, uh, and I will most certainly continue to watch Once Upon a Time. The creativity of the showrunners has always inspired me, and I cannot wait to see uh, the ways that they continue to develop and reinvent the show. Oops. So, uh, this is in fact Jennifer Morrison's uh, last season. Emma's leaving the show. Yes. Uh, Nikki's probably jumping for joy out of her chair. And um, Nikki. 
and nikki fuck you but um and, and she's she has the flu <laughs> no but uh nikki's actually grown to like emma recently like uh well, last I... couple episodes we've talked about she's like you know i i actually agree with what emma did emma's you know really go you know so I th- emma's she's coming around. yeah ex- exactly i think this is a good way i mean they can make it because the curse was to make to separate um her from her family and stuff so but I like it's to see like, how they write her out of the show. How they write, that's probably one reason they're going to be trying to find her, probably. And I have a but feeling that she'll be back. She'll be back oh, in. Oh, she will be. She totally she'll will be. She'll be and go. And probably maybe in a, if she decides, in a, if they get cup, kept, give, cup, keep getting picked up, maybe she'll come back, not next season, but the season after. Or maybe she'll come back in the mid-season. We don't know. Yeah. Things happen. Just, now, Things change. She, so her contract is for a series regular. And so, um, there are there are recurring characters in this show that aren't yep. series regulars, but they do come back. Ruby being one of them, or Mulan, or Archie. I mean, she's going to come back, you guys. She's going to come back. Oh, she's definitely. Because well, I mean, she was specifically asked whether or not she had negotiated to return for the series finale, uh, and she said she can't make any promises at this point. So, it, it's she doesn't want to make a commitment to something because it really depends on her schedule. And it depends on when it actually the series finale is, because it could be yeah. freaking five years from now. We don't know. Yeah, it could um, be next year. We don't. Know. Yeah, we know. It could be. It's. I'm telling you guys right now, it's not this year. Um, yeah. it's Absolutely not. not. We're getting another season. Uh, we we have from um ABC Entertainment President Channing Dungy announced. Uh, Dungy. <laughs> uh, Dungy, Dungy, I don't know. Uh, announces the network's 2017 to 28 primetime schedule will be revealed Tuesday, May 16th. So that is one day before we do the finale podcast. So we hopefully and by hopefully we'll know by then. We'll 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 know by then for sure whether or not we're we're having the next season. Um with that we have uh Jennifer Jennifer Goodwin and and Josh Dallas um have not stated anything about the negotiations for their contract yet. Um they they are the ones that are are kind of keeping it on secret the most. We're probably gonna find out once we we know uh, once the the finale airs, right? Once we see that, yeah. Because for all we know, they may I, I hate to say it, they may die. They may not make it in the finale. And if they say that they're not renewing their contract at that point, then you know we know we knew before going in that something's gonna happen to them. Or, yeah. you know, it could be a pleasant surprise that they are renewing, but they want to leave it. You know, it can go either way. So the reason for them not saying is because they don't want to ruin the finale. Josh exactly. has also stated that um, in the finale that they've put a pretty good bow on it. Uh, a lot of people are going to be really happy with it. Um, a lot of characters have their closure. Uh, everything's in a nice little bow. But there's always going to be things that people don't like and there's a hook left in place in case it does get renewed for another season uh to continue an aspect of the story out so they always do that when their show isn't picked up right all right away yeah. like they did with one like, yeah. yeah that uh, that didn't happen um colin o'donohue uh which is hook still is in contract for one more year uh so he will definitely be in the next season uh, and I'm curious, without Jennifer Morrison around, how they're going to write his character because like you, ju- you just married her, dude. What are right. you gonna do? Well, well, with the with the curse, the way it is, she gets separated. So it could be he spends this whole year trying to find her. Yeah. So here I is don't like, my. Uh, I, really, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want that. I don't want, don't want that. We dealt with we dealt with this on, that's, on that's another just show. That could happen. On another show, we dealt with a character um, that was put under a basically a sleeping curse. Um, for all intents and purposes, um, so the character could come back for the finale, and they dealt with a lot of, oh, I can't believe this character's gone, how can we bring this character back, let's try to find ways to bring this character back, and it really just felt like they were reaching, so I hope that that is not what they do, I don't want this, we can't find Emma. Where's Emma? We have to find her. That goes on and lasts when we know as fans she's not coming back. It feels disingenuous to the show. Um, well, so I hope, not, I hope it's not left like that. I really hope. 
that it is like a happy conclusion with her and it's not spending the characters for the whole it. next season looking for her. They might do it at the beginning just because, oh my God, we're split up from her kind of thing. Yeah. Um, or she chooses to leave. We don't know mm-hmm. how it's going to go. Um, yeah. But you, well, all I'm going to say is you better do it right. And yeah. if yeah. Hook is going to come back, you, there needs to be a reason for him to yeah. still be on the show. Without uh, the women like him and he's hot. Uh, the, that other than that, uh, story wise. <laughs> okay, even some men like him because he's hot. Uh, sure. Um, Go ahead. So this is what I was talking about um, before. Um, that some characters are going to leave when a show goes on for too long. Characters are going to leave, it and that opens the door for other characters to come in. Yes, mm-hmm. Emma is our main character. This is an ensemble cast, but Emma has always been our main character. And with her gone, someone else can come in and like take on. Maybe we'll have a new savior, or maybe there won't be a savior, and we'll just focus on you know other individual characters, and there won't be a main character. Well, we're or... having a new character introduced in the next episode, uh, played by Andrew J. West, uh, who anybody's familiar played gareth on the walking dead um so we don't know anything about this character but supposedly this character is set up for what we're going to be dealing with next season whether it's a villain or a hero or whatever i don't know um so uh i mean a new villain is always welcome on this show but um i feel like um the villain that we have right now, kind of lame. Don't like her. So, uh, I, I would like to see with Emma gone, and all this savior stuff can be on put on hold for a while. I would like to see a villain that's not connected to the mytho- the mythology of the show, um, and like have you know a, just like a new big storyline that we could do, or just like do smaller storylines. That'd be nice. You know, just for a couple of episodes or like for an arc of a season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and that saying uh, from Rumor, the Rumor Mill um, of Robert Carlyle uh, and Bell, I believe, have extended their contracts. It's just not a public thing yet. Um, mm-hmm. Or they're really, really close to uh, negotiation for the contract. Basically, what it came down to with Robert Carlyle's his kids. Um, his whole family moved up there, um, to Canada where they're filming. Uh, and he said it really is going to come down to them at the end of the day more than anything and what's best for them. Uh, so that, that's going to determine whether or not we see Rumple. Seems like the kids are, um, from what the interview was saying, the kids are really happy there. They have a lot of friends and, and stuff like that. So I don't see Robert Carlyle wanting to take his kids away from, from all that. Um, so I 100% expect to see more Rumple uh, next season, and I honestly would be really disappointed if we didn't, but I would still watch. So Yeah. Um, I'm actually really excited to see what the next season brings. Yeah. Yeah, and for, it's, it's time for something new, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, I, and I think with this new, just a bit of predictions, I think this new curse, what the Dark Curse does is it brought everybody to to this realm, this world without magic. Now, I think what this new curse is going to do, if she wants to separate everybody, that this new curse is going to take everybody to different realms. So, like, we'll have, like, a few characters in Oz, and we'll have a few characters in the world without color, and then a few characters in Agrabah. So, like, things like that. Mm-hmm. That'd be cool. Mm-hmm. That'd be cool for sure. Yeah, I'm just, I'm very curious what they're going to do. So, um, do you guys have any prediction on uh, who Andrew J. West could be playing? Uh, I'll pull up a, a picture of him, just so uh, you guys can could kind be. of make prediction based on the picture, uh, which is still going to be really hard, because it may not be necessarily um, a Disney character. I mean, it doesn't have to be. It could just be a literary character, but yeah. honestly... <laughs> You never know with this show, really. Right. Yeah. So. Just look. I mean, and even just looking at him, I honestly couldn't tell you what I would even want him to play. Um, he looks like. He looks like Captain water, Hook. He looks like a watered down version of Hook, is what I would. He looks with. like it could be Hook's son. <laughs> or what an if, older Henry. Yeah, or 
yeah, well, what if Hook, like, you know, in his pirating days, you know, all the port of calls and Well, you know, he wouldn't. Then he wouldn't be a a, a um. He wouldn't be someone. You know what I mean? He could be a kind of like a almost a bad guy trying to get back at his dad for leaving him, kind of thing. Yeah. So he wouldn't be that typical villain that we all know. I'm just saying, just throwing that on out there. God, yeah. my spaghetti theories. Well, you know, I don't, I don't put it past Hook, honestly. Right. Well, at that point in time, he was uh, pretty loose, you know. <laughs> well, the he wasn't loose, but. Um... Uh, yeah, he was. Maybe his maybe his belt was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are saying that it could be an adult older Henry. That's what I was thinking. It could be. But I was um, thinking that was but I was thinking that could be like something like two seasons later. Um Well the big rumor right now is that uh Jared is not returning for next season, uh that he will be going to school and various things. I was gonna say he probably wants to go to school and stuff, so so, no blame. A lot. Of, that's how a lot of kid actors do. They get to this age and they're like, "I want to go to school. I want to go to college. And, I want to, and, like, you know, I want to do that thing." Not necessarily make friends, but you know, I want to. I want to so, do like, that. I don't want to have to go to school in a trailer. Yeah, yeah and right? I mean that that could be something to do with the glyphs too for the author pen that they you know they could be we don't know Which what we that means to, it's we, something we need to we need to pick that back up. Yeah, something that's uh, going to get resolved, I think, in the finale, and that's what we're going to find out. And you know what? You know, once has done things with you know de aging and re aging people before. So you know, uh, and I'd like to see this realm that we're gonna go back to. That apparently time moves differently there, and we don't know what it is. Yeah, almost everybody unanimously, including Nikki in chat, is saying adult Henry. So I'm I'm gonna have to go with that, guys. I I actually 100% agree with you guys. Uh, I don't want to go against. I, I would hope go against the river. I hope it's it would be like a character like Scar, like that would because I've been dying for Scar on this show forever, but I don't see him playing Scar. But then we would need a then we would need a Mufasa. And a Simba. You don't need a Simba. Not necessarily. But yeah, no. But yeah. My first thought was Hook, but you know. Mm-hmm. Like I mean, they could throw that in there. That'd be hilarious as hell. Because yeah. then he'd have to rectify the whole because his dad what his dad did him and. Yep, and I want to know where was Violet during this wedding? Oh, uh, Violet is dead. I'm convinced that she's dead. Yes. Until tell me she's not because Violet because... is coming back for the finale. So, um, in a yeah. coffin. Maybe that's uh, Violet's other boyfriend. Oh, uh, maybe. Uh, <laughs> so that the, little horror. The next two episodes, <laughs> which both air this Sunday, uh, are called "The Final Battle Part One and Part Two. Uh, Henry awakens to a cursed storybrook and finds Emma has been in the mental hospital, and the Black Fairy is the new mayor. Uh, oh, dear Lord. Henry attempts to help Emma regain her memory, while Gold tries to find out what has really happened to Belle. Meanwhile, Snow, Charming, Regina, Zelina, and Hook are trapped in a crumbling fairy tale land, and desperately tried to figure out a way to be re- reunited with Emma and Henry on the season finale. So. so another fucked up version of a world that we've already been to. Yeah, so what are, we, what are we going to call the Black Fairy Storybrook? Uh, we are going to call it uh, Blackbrook. Blackbrook. Blackbrook, okay. <laughs> I love that we both came to that conclusion at the exact same time. It's a horror book. How about that? Blackbrook. 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 <laughs> it's like a Stephen King novel. Yeah. Sounds fantastic. So, you guys have anything else? Nope. I'm just really looking forward to next. We're looking forward to next season. What they're going to do? Yeah, because yeah. no, I, they, I, I mean, after season three, I didn't know what they were going to do. I'm like, you, you did time travel. What else could you possibly do? Well, they did it, and so I just want more. I just want more creativity out of the show. You know, this season. And I think with rocky. Emma gone with. With Jennifer gone, they're gonna have to do something creative. They they cool. have yeah they're gonna have to and you're gonna I have am to gonna say somehow. two shows that I just dealt with this season, um, that both had two of their main characters removed from the show, um, one of which was not new for this season, but they had, they've done two seasons now with it. Um, the uh, one of them, the show went in a completely different direction and was fantastic. Uh, the second show went more of a nostalgia trip because the character was returning for the finale, so it was a little bit of a different uh, boat. 
but both series ended up being really, really well done. Uh, so just because you lose your main character, guys, does not mean the quality of the show uh, is going to dip. Uh, in fact, it kind of does the complete opposite. It reinvents creativity because you don't have to pigeonhole characters into certain roles anymore. You get more mm -hmm. freedom to do what you want. So I 100% expect uh, the show to go in a completely better direction. So Hopefully. Yep. All right, so that is our show. Jake, where can the people find you? You can find me and all my Googles and gore and my monsters and mayhem here on YouTube at Jacob Salazar or on ASO TV. Or you can find me on Twitter or tweeting me throughout the week, throughout the life at 2 Nowhere Land. That is T-O-N-O-W-H-E-R-E-L-E-N-D. -E Join the Nowhere Land Society. I have extended my outro. I've, I've noticed. It's, it's a mouthful now. Uh, pretty soon, I don't know if you're going to be able to do that in one breath. It's going to get longer and longer. No, I'm, I'll find a way. <laughs> Rachel, <laughs> where can the people find you? You can find me at Twitter at VikingWitch76 and on Twitch at VikingWitch. Awesome. Uh, you can find me down below at Phenomenom, P H E N O M E D O M. Phenomenom. And you can find us all and more on Facebook, Gmail, 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 G, Gmail. Twitter, MySpace, and right here on YouTube. Thank you guys so much. And on MySpace. For, for joining us. Uh, there's so many of you in chat. Uh, I, I can't possibly go through and name everyone. There's way too many of you. Thank you guys. Don't you know who try. you are. We love you guys so much. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you again uh, for the finale. And uh, we'll also have some news regarding the Once Upon a Time Rewind that we plan to do um, as well. This summer, yes. Yes, for season two. We will go back and, and do season two. So we'll, we'll have some news for you guys then. Uh... Mm. See you guys later. Bye. Princess Diana's dress looked like moldy frosty. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one quick question that I will address before we end the recording. Uh, yeah, where'd it go? I just saw it. Uh, Ashley says, uh, what shows were I referring to the two that lost their, their leads? And it was Sleepy Hollow, uh, which lost their main lead female actress, and The Vampire Diaries, which for two seasons now has lost their main lead female actress. Um, both both went in completely different and very interesting directions, and, and I applaud them for their creativity. Uh, see you guys later.